Today I'm going to tell about how milk is stored on the farm. And it's usually stored in something like this, a bulk tank. This is a thousand gallon tank. And I bought it used when I built this barn. The guy I bought it off of bought it originally in 1972. So this tank is going on 46 years old. And like I say, other than the coils inside the tank maybe getting holes in them, tanks will last quite a long time. Nowadays, I guess to replace this tank, to buy this tank new, I've heard it's up to like $25,000. So they ain't cheap, but they last a long time. And the rule of thumb's been, milk, well, like I, say, I should say first, milk gets picked up every other day. By regulation, it's supposed to be picked up every 48 hours at the most. But I don't think it is regulation, but kind of the unwritten rule is to have a big enough tank for three days storage. Which I got more than enough room. I don't have a number of cows I should be milking, so I got plenty of room in this tank. In fact, the milkman didn't pick me up the last time because that snowstorm that came through couldn't get up the main roads. So he went around me and he picked up this morning. And I actually had four days in the tank, but that's why you have extra storage because of winter weather. Some areas, you know, they don't have to worry about that. But that used to be the rule of thumb. Nowadays, guys have expanded and they don't upsize the tank and they might get picked up every day. And there's farms out there that, well, I just watched one here on YouTube the other day saying they get picked up three times a day. You know, they milk quite a few cows. And there's places out there, big farms out west, that don't even have bulk tanks. They got a refrigeration unit that the milk passes through and it gets pumped right out on the truck. And they have two or three tankers backed up along the side of the milk house and it just gets pumped right in there and the truck takes them as they're full. But, I mean, yeah, what I'm doing here right now, today is, I've had, that's the washing system. And I have some problem going on here. I've had higher bacteria counts than I should have. They're on the high side of good. They're not bad, but they, they're cons consistently high. So something's not cleaning right. And I'm hoping I changed the impeller in that pump. It didn't seem to be putting out the pressure. Because to clean these, that's what it needs is pressure and hot water. I mean, the water in the, in the farm is usually upwards of 170 degrees. And then in here, this one gets the soap. And now when you put acid and or a sanitizer in, and it runs through a cycle, we'll rinse it originally. So the milk solids, the milk residue comes out. Then it'll run the soap cycle. And then it'll run a hot water rinse cycle, and then it'll run a cold water cycle with the acid. And then before you milk, you run a sanitizer through that, so everything's clean and ready to go. Well, I said the last time I looked down in the tank, the one side of the tank looks like it's got a haze, and I still can't tell if it's just scratches in there, or if there is something more uh, stick not washing out completely. So. If you, anybody has seen my previous videos, I'm going down into another tank. Now this tank to the top here is about five foot. And that's the ladder that goes in the front of the tank here so you can look down in and pull the dipstick out to measure the tank stuff. And I'll tell you about that. This is how milk is measured on the farm. And you can see I've got these numbers on here. And when you pull them, pull this out, and you pull this out of the tank, you wipe it off, you stick it back in. You do it just like you're checking your oil in your car. And then you pull it back out, and yeah, let's see, we'll, some better numbers here. I guess that's a 15. Well, it measures off in 30 seconds, yeah, 16. Say it was 16, 18. Then you would come over to the chart here. I'll say 1518 because I'd have to flip the chart here. 
And you come over here to the 15, and you come down to the 18, and there'd be 3,188 pounds in the tank. And that's what the milk hauler will write down on a slip, and that's what would get based what I get paid for. And then that's how, and I'll tell about that too, how the milk is picked up at the farm. He'll slip his hose through the port there, and on the outside of the milk house is a plug that he plugs into, and then that switch there turns it on and off. He's got an, an AC motor into the truck. The way he'll do is he'll, well, right here, the valve comes off to wash it because this is the valve, and that gets clamped onto there. After he measures the tank, he'll start it agitating. And he's got to let it ag agitate for several minutes. And he does that while he's writing up his slip. And then he'll start pumping the milk. And then when it's pumping, he'll pull a sample of the milk. I think it's two ounces, maybe three ounces. It's a little sample bottle. And then when, the, when they get to the milk plant, they sample the truckload, of, whole truckload of milk. And if it tests positive for any antibiotics, then they go back through all them samples and find out who had antibiotics in their milk. And then that guy's buying a truckload of milk. And when you start talking a 5,000 gallon or 6,000 gallon tractor trailer load of milk, you could be talking well in excess of 12 to 15 thousand dollars. So nobody wants to do that. Have to end up paying it now. I do carry a writer on my insurance that would cover me if that happened. And it also covers me if we lose power and I can't refrigerate the milk and it goes bad, I got dumped the milk, it'll pay me for that. And I mean, if I lose power for two weeks and I got dumped all that milk for two weeks, the insurance covers it. But I got a backup generator, so that's usually not a problem. But I have used it where the refrigeration unit has gone bad in the middle of summer and it's seven, eight hours before they get the tank fixed, that milk is sitting here at 70 degrees, it goes bad. So that's the other thing insurance will pay for too. But it's another thing, you do that too many times, the insurance drops you. And then uh, also on these trucks, they could possibly have a DC motor where it's actually hooked into the battery of the truck. Some guys do that. Now my milk hauler actually has a gas motor on his truck too. And that came in handy here a couple weeks ago. He, he picked me up before I got to the barn, so I didn't have the generator hooked up and the power went off overnight. So he is able to pump the milk that way. So, like I said, there's several different ways they, they can pump the milk. So, but what I'm hoping here now is I'm gonna go down in that tank and hopefully this thing pauses right so I can get down in there. I'll show you the inside of the tank. And then I say, I'll see if there's any, any place where there's a milk solids build up or residues or anything and see what I gotta do to get them clean, see if we can get these counts down to keep everybody happy. So we'll see what happens here. Hopefully this will work out and I'll see you when I get down to the tank. Well, I made it in. I don't know how this is gonna sound with all the echoes. Right here is the uh, agitator. This spins around and, and I've had problems where you, know, you get on the back side here. It's going to be a sketchy video. I've had problems before. This groove here has got a build up in it, but that's clean. Well, 
Let me say, I washed it this time. I washed it with a heavier dose of soap. So it might have uh, worked that stuff loose. And nothing here is going to come off. fun but yeah I guess there's nothing in there to worry about I just got to think more dirtier getting in here with my boots and stuff on than finding anything wrong in there so that means I have to run run the wash cycle again make sure I get this cleaned out Uh, that's the other thing with these tank washers. That control box actually works, turns on and off the tank. It's all in the controls on the one. And there's a timer on that. And about every hour when it's turned on and there's milk in here, the agitator will run for, it's like four or five minutes. And they like say it keeps everything stirred up. And this is all on automatic, you got thermostat and stuff, and automatic refrigeration unit. And, Temperature creeps up a little bit, it kicks on, cools it down, keeps the milk down under 38 degrees. That's what you do with the tanks. You set them as cold as you can get them without building ice up in the tank. Because when you build ice up, that affects the butterfat tests and stuff. But I don't see any problems with this. If I can get myself back up out of this tank, so. But I don't know how it's going to turn out looking inside here, but uh, well, that's something nobody really gets to see is the inside of the bulk tank. Now you get into the bigger ones, like a three, four, or five thousand gallon tank, they actually have a manhole like this on the side and it clamps shut there that you can open up and crawl into because you got to be able to get into them because anything ever goes wrong, you got like to be able to get in here and clean it. So. I'm trying to think of if there's anything else I wanted to mention about bulk tanks and stuff. Yeah. So we'll see here, get out, and see if I can think of anything else in the meantime. Yeah, I'll show you this. This is what we used to send milk in until the about 1980 or 1981. Milk cans. Hold about 10 gallon and we used to fill them up and we had a tank or a cooler that them can slid in and it would shower them with cold water to cool them off. And problem with them things, they had to be picked up every day. But I don't think very few places. I think there's some Amish out there that still use milk cans. But that milk's got to go for cheese, whatever market they got. But they actually have to take that and dump it into a community tank when the milk truck will come pick it up. Nobody, I don't think there's a milk company out there anymore that lets you bring milk in in cans. But, yeah, I thought I'd show that. Yeah, and this is actually the fourth tank we've owned. So back in the early 80s, we were, 70s and early 80s, we shipped in cans. Then the company we were shipping with eliminated them, so we put in a 310 gallon tank. And we used that tank until, I think it was 90, 92, 91 or 92. And we were flooding that tank and I put in a the guy that hauls our milk, or used to haul our milk, he uh, used to deal in tanks and stuff. And he didn't like having to pick up, we'd actually fill milk cans and send them by the tank, and they didn't like doing that. So he talked us into putting in a bigger tank, we put in a 415 gallon. And these tanks were like this one, but only like half. There was a lower half rounded and had these big flat lids that flipped up and you could get right down into the tank and reach it un underneath and stuff. 
And then in less than two years, I was flooding that one. So then we put in a 545 gallon tank. And that's what I used until 2007 when we moved down to this. And I built this, bought this tank because it came up for sale in the paper and the deal I couldn't pass up. And I figured it's easier to get this tank, have it all installed, ready to go, than to take a day, have to move the other one down here and race while we're moving cows from the old barn to this barn and all that. So, and this one's actually sized for the barn we got here to milk more cows. And then part of that deal was this tank here. This is what they call a free heater. And that actually is tied into the refrigeration lines on the bulk tank compressor. And this does two things. The water goes into this tank first before it goes into the hot water tank. And your well water is like 50 to 60 degrees. Well, it's got these, this has got the coils, you see the lines back here, wrap around the tank, and it heats the water. It's doing two things. It's taking heat from them coils so the bulk tank compressor cools faster, and it's heating the water. This water will get up to like 100 to 115 degrees before it goes into the hot water tank. So instead of heating 60 degree water to 170 degrees and using all that electricity, you're heating 100 to 115 degree water to 170 degrees. So you're using less electricity by doing that. And like I say, this tank here, this is actually a second tank. These tanks are like $2,000. And the one that came eventually put a hole, got a hole in it. The, coils for the cool refrigerant and I kept losing refrigerant and I wasn't going to put another one on because two thousand dollars for my size operation it's not very effective but this one was actually damaged in shipment and you can't even really see it right there it had this plastic coating around it film and it was ripped to shreds on the one side and you think this thing was all damaged to beat hell but just this one little dent here I got this whole thing bought and installed for 1200 bucks. They couldn't ship it back. I guess I guess the shipping company damaged it and paid them for it, so they can't gave me a good deal on because it was damaged and then just basically cost me a little extra to install it. No, well, not a little extra. It's about a half day job and you're paying them 80, 90 dollars an hour refrigeration service. But this was one of the few things that helped save money here on the farm. But, but yeah, uh, give a little information how milk's stored on the farm, how milk's picked up. It's actually gotten longer video than I wanted. And then, as I showed the center inside of the tank, whether that comes out very good or not. But so I've gone on long enough here, way longer than I wanted to. But. So I guess I'll get that hooked back up and run another wash cycle to get my boot prints and everything out. I'll have to take the, I'll take the garden hose first, hose the heaviest stuff out. And then uh, run another cycle and I'll be ready to milk tonight. So hope somebody finds a little bit of information in this and we'll catch you later.